I think Snake put it best in this episode of Vinland Saga. The master is full of... Yeah, you know, it's, it's too early in the video. YouTube doesn't like the S word too early anymore. But you get my point. So, Vinland Saga, I mean, we've already had it confirmed that he's not Iron Fist. He's not some proud warrior. They confirmed it a handful of episodes back. But they really beat it over your head in this episode, thanks to Snake saying, I was trained by Iron Fist. This is the man I was seeking out. And the man I found is, you know, completely other than that. He's just taking the legacy because they share the same name. And what we're seeing is what happens when a weak man goes to war and drags hundreds of men to their deaths. Now, what should have happened, which Snake wanted to happen, was to just not fight. It was a losing battle, and Snake, pure ride or die right there, literally not going to let all these men go to their death without a fighting chance, even if he's fully convinced they can't win. And honestly, Kittle is a weak man. I think at last week's episode proved that. At the end of the day, there really is no kind slave owners. At the end of the day, a kind slave owner would buy someone and set them free. What he did was, yes, nicer than what a lot of people ended up getting, but the fact that he took out such anger, people don't just beat people like that unless they're capable of it this entire time. You can blame Canute. You can blame all these circumstances for pushing him over the edge, but it doesn't change the fact the person who raised his fist was him. And the fact that, you know, there's so many moments throughout this episode where, literally, we have Jean Vikings, we have the the, the worst warriors to go up against, and they're laughing because, oh, only a hundred? We have three times that. Anyone who is actually an iron fist would know that they need 10 to 20 times the amount to even potentially have a chance. If you had Season 1 Thorfinn, ready to kill. If you had Snake, if you had Thorkill, if you had Thorgil, and maybe a few other of the key fighters, maybe even throw an Aslad, yes, maybe then you could win this battle. But this battle is a slaughter fest. Now, yes, Thorgil is attempting to go from behind, which is honestly a good play, all things considered. The other brother didn't quite make it. Is he gonna do it? Maybe, but probably not. And if they did that, yes, the battle would be won and we'd have someone try to claim victory because he's this proud warrior. But no, he's an idiot. He absolutely is. He's a weak man. And the good man between the this entire group is truly his father, who last we saw was crawling on the ground. And honestly, who knows what's happening there. But this was an incredible episode. Without characters like Kido, we wouldn't have a good show, so I'm thankful he's a part of the show, but he is a weak man, and Snake knows that, and Snake, he tried, but bless him, there's only so much you can do when someone thinks that they're that indestructible right now. Now, I do have a full live reaction episode 19 available on my Patreon if you do want to see my full uncut thoughts. This was an incredible episode. Where do you go after literally witnessing one of the most painful things that we've seen in this show? I mean, you basically show them shit out of luck. That really is how you should put this. And I love the fact that for Snake, it's not like when you look at Snake and you look at his men, we know they're not good people. Snake himself has literally said, we aren't good people. We have fake names because of the lies we used to live. But the difference when watching Snake interact with his men and his men picking up arms to not let Snake walk to his death alone is the fact that they don't hide the fact that they're scumbags. They literally admit that. And we know people who they are fighting, the fact that all these men that are slaughtering them like they're made of butter, all they do is think about war and killing. We know this world and this time period is not modern. We know this time period is not good. But when we look at current mentalities of what people are trying to do, people trying to get a beaten, abused, an abused slave, at the very least, a chance to go home, we know it's not going to work because next episode is titled Pain and we're literally mirroring Gardar's final moments. But it doesn't change the fact that's a good moment in a shit-stained world. And when you have a man like Hito just, he's so angry, he's, he's trying to pretend he is the Iron Fist, and he knows nothing about battle. He knows nothing about taking the words of people smarter. You know, a good ruler, someone like right now, Kanu, he's gonna do some stupid things and he's going to lose his mind, it feels like, given that he is talking to a severed head. But at the end of the day, you surround yourself with people who know things that you don't. You know, someone like Kanu, he's not gonna simply say, I'm gonna make the battle the way I want it to go. No, he's gonna look at his best warriors, his best general, and they're gonna devise a plan that will guarantee them success. They took a hundred of these men because they knew a hundred is what they needed and they would have extra to protect. At the end of the day, though, if, let's just think, right, someone like Canoe, he thinks he only needs 10 of these men to slaughter the whole village, 
and basically control the land, he would take a hundred just to be sure, right? The fact that someone like this master, who literally all his life has been a farmer, honestly, the fact that he's trying to act like he knows what he's doing, half of his men have pots and pans as helmets. You knew it wasn't going to be good, and the fact that, you know, if only they knew at the start that they were going up against the king, then less people would have shown up, but the more people who pile in, the more they get encouraged and they're fired up, only to have what we see here, just like they're casually talking about how 70 men are getting slaughtered like it's nothing. It's it's pain, and the fact that, bless them, they're trying, but we know they're not going to make it. The fact that we can't move her without worrying about what could happen to her, right? Like, there's probably a lot of internal injuries there. I mean, it's most likely a miscarriage guaranteed to begin with. Worse things definitely happening on the horizon. But the fact that we're seeing this vision, this dream, and I'm like, oh man, you're doing the same thing you did with Gardar. You're, you're showing the family life. You're showing all these moments. And she's only waking up potentially to say goodbye. There's no way they make it. And if she does end up dying, do they turn around and take her back? Or do they just keep trying to leave? Like, I don't know. One thing that I saw a lot of people talk about last week was the lack of reunion with Leif as well as Thorfinn, which honestly I thought was obvious, but I could also understand why some people maybe brought it up. Because at the end of the day, you know, this is like their second reunion, right? This is something that's been built up for many years for some of these characters. That at the end of the day, when you see a close friend to the person that you're looking for beaten and bruised in such a violent way, I mean, yeah, the reunion no longer matters in that moment. You're gonna need to cool down for a few hours. And I love what they ended up doing here, which makes it feel so much better, because someone who literally looked at this boy the last he saw them as this murderous psycho now is seeing him as a completely different person. I'm totally convinced Leif was like, oh, I thought I found the wrong Thorfinn again, because... This just didn't feel like the same person, but we're seeing them just genuinely happy after things cool down because now you can at least catch your breath and you can say, shit man, you actually are here and you know, I apologize that this isn't the reunion you wanted, but I care about this woman a lot, you can understand my point. And of course he understands that. So I like what they did over the past two episodes with finally getting the reunion and not letting it be what they envisioned for so long, if ever, because that scene ruined everything, right? And this is an amazing season. I mean, the fact that when they initially start the attack, I was totally convinced that we could end this battle this episode with eight minutes remaining because they didn't stand a chance. Now, yes, with Thorgil approaching the back, it will then force some troops to then retreat, and yes, the battle will get extended. Snake is an amazing warrior. Thorgil is an amazing warrior. But at the end of the day, th these are the best warriors and the worst warriors to go up against. They just can't win. I don't see how. And honestly, this really does paint the picture of why Canoe is going to have a very successful life, and the thing that will truly be his own downfall is his lack of sanity, because he's paranoid of everything, and paranoia, yes, will keep you alive, but paranoia will drive you to the point of having no one close that you can trust. Who knows how long it will take before he truly loses his marbles for good, because you don't talk to severed heads and make it too long in this world, and if you do, you kind of become a mad king. But this was an incredible episode. Peakland Saga is here. It's a masterpiece. I can't wait to see what season three is going to deliver after how season two took it up a notch like it did, but thoughts and feels yourself down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell, of course, so you can get notified when I upload on the channel. And like I mentioned, we do have a full live reaction to this episode available on my Patreon if you're interested. While you're there, you can also get a video shout out. So today, we have Dylan Miles. Raymont and Edre Zahari, so I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.